the live button. Let's see what happens. Oops. Meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. All right. Well, now we are live. So let's go ahead and get to it, shall we? So, all right. Well, I don't know if this is streaming or not, but we're going to do it anyway. So greetings, everyone. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Private Lender Podcast. I'm your host, Keith Baker, and this is episode 85. If you're looking for practical tips and advice on mitigating risk in your private lending, then you're in the right place. But if you want to learn from my mistakes so that you can avoid them, then pull up a chair, my friend, because this podcast is created for those who are looking to take control of their financial future and passively diversify into real estate-backed investments without banks and Wall Street or toilets, tenants, and termites. Ultimately, I want to create a tribe of lenders that act as the bank to active real estate investors, but also change the way we think about money, but more importantly, the way we teach the kids and the future generations about money. And together, we can all prosper without the too big to fail banking system. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I, for one, I'm getting ready for the next downturn. Um, not doing anything drastic, but just mentally getting prepared and going to start collecting the acorns and the cash because uh, when there's blood in the streets and the banks tighten up, it will be uh, a private lender's paradise. It will be the it'll be private lenders who provide the capital to keep the real estate market, uh, you know, churning ahead. So that's why uh, I want to build this this tribe of lenders, and I want to thank you for being a part of that tribe and for watching or listening today. So let's go ahead and get down into the brass tacks. On today's episode, I wanted to give you my thoughts on Quest Trust Company Self Directed IRA Expo that just happened. Uh, this weekend. It ended about two and a half hours ago, uh, maybe three. And man, did the gang over at Quest really step up and out, out, it really outdid themselves again this year. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone over there at Quest, uh, you know, from Quincy, Nathan, Nate, uh, Juan, Rebecca, Haley, Keaton. And most of all, I want to send a big thank you to Anne Marie for having me speak on the private money panel and for letting me be a part of such a, a truly, truly great and, and, and wonderful event. So, Thank you, everybody. And I'm really looking, I'm already looking forward to, to next year's expo. And, and that's why I wanted to kind of break um, my, uh, the, my programming schedule and go ahead and record this t today and get it out in about a week or so just to, because uh, I want to talk about what's still on my mind and I'm still a little giddy uh, about conferences and or the expos, uh, you know, giddy about it and what I learned, who I met, um, a lot of cool stuff. So let me just go ahead and dive right into that and just say, you know, of course, I've met a lot of very interesting people uh, from brand, you know, I call brand newbies uh, all the way to, you know, who, who barely have any capital um, or, or you know, just starting off in their investing or real estate investing career. And uh, I met a few newly made uh, millionaires you know, looking for options, uh, where to park some money and um, very, very interesting people from all over the country. Um, and there were, I mean, so let's just, you know, what they're hard money lenders, uh, lawyers, IRA specialists. That's what Quest, everyone at Quest is, a, is pretty much a specialist and they specialize in a certain area um, so that your, your questions can get answered very, very quickly. Um, but yeah, there were also, you know, there were gurus and coaches, typical seminar expo stuff, but there are a ton of people just like you and me. Uh, and it was, it, uh, I guess it was about a thousand attendees. I'm not sure how many vendors and sponsors and speakers, but uh, it was a, a very, very good, uh, and yet another very good, great expo. And I spent as much time as I could watching it and, and, and not at the table at the booth, probably much to my detriment or the podcast's detriment, but it was, that's how good it was. Um, so it, um, yeah, it was really, it was a really, it was long. It was a three day weekend, but it was, it was, uh, it was, it was really cool. Um, and like I said, there are a ton of people just like you and me, you know, um, those of us who are looking for, you know, for more from our investments and retirement accounts. And, and then you got to see, you could extrapolate, extrapolate that to life in, in general for uh, we are the seekers and hopefully one day we'll be the knowers. All right. That's a little corny, but um, I did feel like, you know, there was a lot of kindred spirits there with many of the attendees and the vendors. And, you know, this is why we drag our, our hungover selves down to the ballroom to listen and to learn and to meet and to increase our network and therefore our net worth with these type of events. So um, no disappointment there. Uh, I unfortunately did hear several tales of woe uh, from people um, who you know, uh, knew, enough, knew enough, but didn't know what they were really doing. Uh, so 
you know, they made some mistakes that I, I, I rail against and preach against because I've made those same mistakes too. So um, hopefully I was, be able to, I was able to give these people a little bit of comfort uh, and some empathy for their mistakes. You, know, you don't need to beat yourself up too much, just enough to, to where you don't do it again. Uh, but after that, you, you, you should stop. But some of these, uh, the classic mistakes were um, you know, trusting the borrower uh, uh, in regards to the value of the property or looking at only the, the comps that they have you know, cherry picked and not running their own or getting their own um, CMA, you know, competitive market analysis or, or having um, yeah, some type of comp run uh, from the MLS active are not active, but recently sold within the last th three months, preferably the last month is even better. Um, you know, six, they, they trusted, they got burned. Uh, some people didn't use their attorney to draft uh, the, the, the documents. And, and in, in some cases, they re recycled documents, which uh, I, 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 again, I rail against and because I've made the mistake. And it's, it's, it's one you feel like you, you, pre you, still, you feel dumb. You feel pretty dumb when it happens. And, and that's why I say don't do it. Just set that in your head. It's non-negotiable. And um, so, some of the other, you know, the uh, kind of uh, telltale mistakes or the ones you see a lot, they didn't get a lender's policy, titled insurance policy. And, and there was a, somebody was, cont was contested. Uh, a, an heir came out of the woodwork. Or in some cases, people, rather than using the title company and sending money only to a title company, they sent wires or checks, or certified checks, cashier's checks directly to the borrower, uh, which you, you never want to do. So, uh, you know, heard some of those stories and uh, hopefully the people that told them to me, well, I want to thank you for, for sharing your stories with me and uh, don't, don't feel too bad. You're going to do better on uh, the next time. And like I said, just, you know, shoot me an email next before you, you do a loan and, you know, let me just have a quick uh, once over because I can, I can spend five minutes and, and save, save a lot of heartache. So uh, anyway, tales of woe. You get them. And, and of course, um, oh, everyone, everyone thinks the sky is falling. The recession is in the bag, which, you know, it, it seems logical that that's the, that's kind of where we're going. But I, I, I made the joke of the, uh, the, the, the next recession starting in the next two to 24 months. So, uh, and everyone kind of agreed. Yeah. Nobody can, everyone knows it's coming. We just don't know when, and you know, as the signs start to to show up. So I thought that was very, very interesting, but I, I know, you know, this makes flippers nervous, landlords a little nervous sometimes, uh, newbies nervous, but it makes private lenders like me very, very excited. So uh, yeah, I'm gathering my acorns and getting ready for that. But another takeaway was that uh, opportunity still exists. There's still very much opportunity out there. I've met a lot of people looking to deploy their capital and you know, met a lot of people looking to, to fund their deals and, and are finding deals or uh, projects that people from, you know, your typical single family flipper to people that do commercial land development or, you know, buy old buildings and reconvert them or to reconvert or convert them into you know, a new use. But there was plenty of plenty of deals and plenty of cash out there for it. You just got to, you know, you got to go to these events and network for it, meet people. And, and one of the, uh, one of the talks that Quincy, Quincy Long, gave was on uh, inherited the inherited Roth IRA, which I, I told Nate here, I said, look, I'm just, I'm just going to grab that audio and that's going to be a full episode on the show because it is it, yeah. Quincy's a very smart man and he, he's a big fan of this and there's a good reason why, but I'm gonna let him explain you know why, but there you can, you can get, you can get extremely creative. I saw several panels with the attorneys that were, you know, you, you mixing, self-directed IRA accounts with entities and, and, you know, not only, uh, you know, 401ks, IRAs, LLCs. And it's, it was, man, yeah, it was over my pay grade, uh, to, to say the least, but uh, the, the big takeaway I took was, oh wait, the big takeaway was you can, you can get very creative, very legally, very ethically, very morally, and you can, you can give your grandkids one hell of a start, uh, in their financial life with the inherited Roth IRA. So, Pay attention; that'll be coming soon. But it's uh, there's a lot of opportunity out there, and uh, you just yeah go find it, go go sniff it out, and not everything's gonna you know work out. So do you do what you know? Because coming up to the really huge, 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 huge takeaway is do the due diligence, and yeah, do the due 
right there. I'm trying to do this for the Facebook folks. There it is. That's the new phrase of, of the year, do the do. And it, it came out on every panel. It came out on every talk. Uh, and, you know, there were, I uh, understand there were a couple of, a uh, uh, few sales pitches from the, uh, the stage, but uh, even you know, everybody, it's, you got to do the due diligence. And that just comes back into pillar number one for the private lender podcast. Never trust, always verify. And that made me feel good. And in fact, one guy stopped and asked if he could take the picture of the back of my shirt where it says, you know, never trust, always verify uh, private lender podcast.com. So I was happy to oblige him and let him have a photo. And it, um, yeah, it was kind of weird and it made me a little uncomfortable, but I, it's kind of cool at the same time. So there, there's my, my 15 seconds of fame for the weekend. Um, another takeaway that came from the, the, you know, there were some amazing speakers up there with, ama- you know, Quincy, uh, John Heyer, Jeff Watson, and those, 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 there's three lawyers right there. You want to listen to, even though you know, Quincy doesn't practice, but John and Jeff do. And, man, wealth of knowledge and experience from, from those two gentlemen there. And you know, one of the things I think, I think it was Jeff said, you know, you kept pounding, make consistent uh, contributions to your retirement accounts. You know, every month, every paycheck, make consistent because that consistency will pay you dividends in, in the long run. And it, look, there's nothing, you know, it, there's nothing new with that, but it's, it is so true that we often forget when we open up the account, start working with them, we stop contributing to it. You know, the government allows either five or six or $7,000 a year, depending on your age and your income status, but we should, you know, and yes, that benefits quest because of you know, the more accounts that they, they get, the more fees, but man, um, I'm okay with, I'm totally okay with that. Let's um, <laughs> I'm yeah, I, uh, there's there's some really interesting and creative things out there that you can do and 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 quest is at the forefront of of teaching people how to do it so um lots of that this weekend and uh so yeah can contribute but also things you know do plant seeds now so that uh you can let them grow and they'll you know they'll they'll have a shade tree in, in in a few years and do the work now put in the effort now to make sure you're you're future is, is, is secured. And so there was a lot of talk about that, planting your seeds. And, but the real, I guess the big takeaway for me this weekend, not just on the education side or the speak, but more on the speaker side is that, uh, you know, a, a reputation is everything. You know, it takes a lifetime to earn and only a second to burn and to lose it. So, yeah, I've heard this and known this my whole life, but it, it really struck me over the weekend and it hit me in, the, in, in between the eyes because I, I met and saw the remains of people who had, you know, had been taken advantage of. And it is, you know, it's demoralizing uh, to these people. And yeah, okay, they should have known better, whatever you can make arguments for both sides. I'm not, you know, I just, I just hate seeing people getting taken advantage of. They don't know any better. And in fact, I'm not going to name any names. Um, you know, I'm not pointing any fingers. It's just, uh, I want to take a nice 30,000 view, the foot view at this. Um, because I really feel like I need to go on the, on the record with this. I don't want to bring anybody down. Uh, but I understand, you know, this does, this, this is a bummer. Um, but I, I really do, uh, you want to go on, on, on the record and say, cause I, I've, I heard a ton of rumors over during, during the expo from, from people, you know, vendors, uh, operators, investors, l- lenders, uh, and there as in most, um, as in most, you know, human events or events, events involving human beings, there are a ton of rumors, you know, floating about and some of it was about the stock market and you know, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. But um, there were some rumors about uh, someone, you know, basically uh, that I've had on the show. There's no, basically I, I had them on the show, but they, they apparently had an, an investment that did not turn out as, as anticipated or uh, I'm not sure what, what the chain of events is, but the bottom line is the rumors are this person is now being sued, has lawsuits against him. And, Again, this is somebody I've, I've had on the show, somebody I, I, kind of, I looked up to. I still do, I, I think. Um, but, you know, I, I, 
I, I immediately I'm saddened by that, but also at the same time, that's, that's, you know, sad, sadness is an emotion. So I, okay. W- take the emotion out of it. What's the logical thing. There are three sides to every story. And let's get, in the case of a husband and wife, there's his, hers, and the truth. So, or, you know, somewhere in between is the truth. So I like to look at it like that. And I'm, I'm not condemning this person who's apparent. I, you know, I haven't seen, I haven't researched to confirm whether or not these lawsuits are, are have actually been filed uh, in, you know, in the, in the, at the County courthouse. Uh, so I, you know, I can, I can either confirm nor dispel these rumors and I'm not saying anyone's name because I don't want to further them on because it doesn't matter if the horror stories are true or they're not. Reputation is everything. And that's really the lesson here because, you know, of course you don't screw people over. You know, you're going to it always comes back to bite you in the ass, but rumors are already out there doing the damage regardless of what happened. Right. And let's say something bad did happen, but it has nothing to do with lawsuits or it, it, it doesn't matter. It's the, 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 the tarnish. Um, there's, there's tarnish on the act, on the, on the person now, on, on their credibility, on their personality and their integrity. And as someone who, you know, I aspire, I make no bones about it, to be an online educator. And I really take this to heart um, because I have to be mindful and I have to be mindful about who I bring onto the show because, you know, they have something – I want to bring people on that have something that's interesting to say, or perhaps a product or service that the private lender nation may find useful, could actually find useful. And I have to keep uh, what I call the crispy clean reputation. And I, I sure as hell don't want to bring a fox into the hen house um, to eat all the eggs. But it's, it's apparent that, you know, I prided myself on, on verifying things and I, I, not even I can keep things like this from happening. Uh, or, you know, being affected by it, not just happening, but um, no matter how much verification I do, I mean, sometimes shit does happen, things go south. And it, you know, things like that, that ruin reputations, or at least, you know, they, they become roadblocks, or they, you know, they knock you off course for a little time. Uh, but I find that when, and, and I don't know what happened, but I, it's my opinion that when things like this do happen, that immediate and sincere communication is the only thing that can can stop bad feelings and the rumor mill especially from from starting up but 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 that that communication has to come in real time and long before any crap goes down Uh, if you borrow somebody's money whether it be mine or friends or relatives a bank or you know from a hard money lender it's it's my belief that immediate accurate real time and sincere communication is the only way to deal with mistakes and losses or downturns or unfortunate events I tell you this because over the next few months, I'll be having guests and providing some affiliate links to some of those guests. What this means is I will have links to other people's products or services, and I will receive a compensation, a commission or an affiliate fee for the purchase that you make. And I want to put it out there and tell you out first right now, this is how it works. You know, if you click on a link, you're either going to give up, you're going to buy something, you're going to give up your money <laughs> or um, perhaps, perhaps some information, an email address, a name or number or whatever. But that's how this online world works. And it's taken me the, the, the last year and a half to, I guess, come to the table and play the game with the rules that are set out or start to learn the rules that are set out so I can play the game. And then tweet. I, I just don't want to, I just want to be one of those cheesy people that send out an email every day with another different affiliate link. So don't worry, but you're not going to get that. Um, and, and I only want to bring people on that, you know, actually help or have a service that may help uh, lender nation. So uh, I'm probably going to start a, a, an email address so that I can get some feedback about that as, uh, as we move forward. But um, yeah, I, I want to give you, you know, tell you that, you know, yes, of course it goes to me, it goes without saying, you have my word that I'm going to do everything I can, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna do everything I can to vet, the people that come onto the show and, and not allow a scammer or a charlatan to get in front of, uh, in front of the lender nation so that they can feel safe about the people that I bring around, or at least you can feel like I'm not just bringing some Joe Schmo off the street saying, he can, Hey, I can make you rich and sell my product. Uh, I'm not doing that, but I, however, at the same time, I can't beg you and, and ask you to and require you to, to please, 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 please do the due diligence, do your own due diligence on anybody that I promote or allow to pitch or sell their wares. This goes from, you know, when you're looking at, you know, members for your lending team, like attorneys, appraisers, brokers, inspectors, note servicing companies, you know, borrowers, operators, fund managers, you know, so on and so forth. Um, I'm going to try to bring people on that I believe are out doing the right thing and doing the good thing. But 
you know, unfortunately, sometimes crap happens and, you know, there's risk in every investment. There's risk in driving down the freeway to go to your, your office or home every day. So I just, I guess what I'm asking is let's, can we agree? I'm asking you to let's both do our part for both our sakes and, you know, do the due diligence, never trust, always verify. I'm, I'm going to have to do a whole episode on that. That's my new hat. It's the hashtag. It's uh, I don't know if I can copyright it or do something crazy like that, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what uh, what goes on. But yeah, that that's really the big takeaway. Uh, especially now the market is frothy. The economy is frothy. You know, there are quote unquote deals that are being bought and sold that you just look and people are already losing money. They're already lost money on the buy. Even if it's cash flowing for the next 12 months, they're ultimately going to lose money because they're just buying too high. Um, so yeah. So both, you know, so from that, do the due diligence, learn as much as you can. I promise I'm going to bring people on that. I, I think can help. If, if you disagree, I certainly want to hear about that. Or if one of them screws you over, absolutely. I want to, I want to hear about that. Cause I, I feel it would be up to me to step in and well, if, if, if and help, if I can, and two, you know, I uh, would send a message very, very quickly and clearly. Um, to the the offender so but again everyone you know three sides every story but so that's that's the framework i'm taking away from what i thought was an amazing amazing quest quest expo so <clears throat> excuse me i guess i'm coming down it's time for cedar it's late august and um other allergens to start floating down in the houston area but um that's all i have for now and i i really do want to thank you for hanging in there and, and listening or in this some cases watching on on Facebook, um, guys must have nothing else to do, but, um, thank you so much. And if you could do me a, a big favor and leave an honest rating and review over at iTunes, uh, Google podcast, or whatever platform you use to listen to this podcast, the more ratings and reviews it gets, it, it, it helps put the uh, episodes into the ears and more and more people just like you and me. And, you know, we want to take control of our money and our future. And I ask, I'm just asking you to help me out. Uh, and get the word out there so we can all get our slice and also please connect with me on social media facebook instagram linkedin bigger pockets all those all those links can be found at uh, privatelanderpodcast.com again i appreciate you listening i want to thank you for your time and your consideration and please keep reaching out to me via email i really appreciate it or facebook messenger i uh, i do appreciate all the feedback i, I get even if I haven't responded to you, please keep it coming. I want to thank everyone with whom I spoke to over the weekend. I really learned a ton and that I'm going to start writing things down before I stop, uh, before I forget them. As soon as I'm done recording, I got to write a bunch of things down. So besides health and happiness and self-awareness, I wish you all happy and prosperous private lending. I'll see you on the next episode.